Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at mitigations that's been applied due to vulnerabilities in CPUs. Recently, Redbleed was announced, and as I understand from reading some articles in Pharonix, they had quite a big impact on various Intel and AMD processors. Pharonix did some benchmarking on some CPUs, and it seems that after the mitigations were applied, performance drops were quite severe. So I decided to test this and I will link all these articles in the description for you as well, so you can go and read it. In some white papers, they were seeing, for instance, that the mitigations could result in a 14 to 39% overhead. As I understand, researchers and hardware vendors believe that Redbleed affects AMD Zen 1, Zen 1 Plus, and Zen 2 processors, but not the later Zen 3 CPUs. Um, on the Intel side, Core 6 generation through Core 8th generation CPUs are impacted, so Skylake through Coffee Lake. Um, I also saw a I also saw a YouTube clip on Chris Titus Tech where he was doing a speed up lining segment and he recommended uh, disabling mitigations and enabling Z swap for 16 gigabyte or less systems. So just a word of warning. Um, I think the whole community pretty much commented on that video of Chris's to say that you should not disable mitigations. Um, I also believe that you shouldn't disable mitigations, even if you really need that little bit of performance increase. Chris Titus was saying that he was saw performance increases as low as 30% and the average increases about 10%. Um, I've tested this at least from a gaming perspective and I didn't really see any improvement or very little improvement. I tested uh, to disable mitigations and also to enable Z-Swap for 16 gig or less systems. So, like I said, I, I do not at all recommend to disable it. But I tested it just to see if it does in fact make a difference. And if you want to go, I will link this as well in, in, in the description. If you want to go watch the, the video and also read the comments from the people in the Lynx community, please go ahead and do that. Then, on another page that I found, maybe just give you a little bit more background on how to check what is being uh, mitigated on your CPU. Find out what's your kernel version. LSCPU you can run to see if you what is being mitigated on your specific CPU. And then it also shows you how to, to change your grub configuration. So let's do that. So LSCPU grip vulnerability, and then it shows you what vulnerabilities is being applied for your specific CPU. Then you can go ahead and edit your grub menu. I'm using nano. Specifically, you want to go to the line called grub command line Linux. Add mitigations off. Save it to your grub. Exit out. Now I just always double check that I did in fact save it correctly. Yes, mitigations is off. And then you have to apply it to your grub configuration. Of course, this might be different depending on what on what grub you are using. Okay, and then you have to reboot, apply the settings. Okay, so I'm just checking again whether the, the grub configuration has worked. So now you can see it's changed to vulnerable and no longer mitigated. Okay. Check if Zswap is enabled on your system. There you can see it's been loaded. And as you can see, without adding the perimeter that Chris Titus has re recommended, you'll see it is set as no. So then you can apply it to the grub. And then if you look again, the swap parameters enabled is saying yes. Now Zswap is enabled correctly on your system with the below parameters. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to do these tests, at least from a gaming perspective, that's where it matters most for me. 
and I've got only got two games currently installed, which is Red Dead Redemption and Cyberpunk, so I decided to just test on them. As you can see here, I did a FPS comparison. Frame time, you can see there as well, looking fairly similar. I ran the benchmark three times per game. As you can see, with mitigations on, 1% minimum of 87, average of 111, and 143 for the 97th percentile. The mitigations on and Z swap on, I actually saw a little bit less. With Z swap on and mitigations on, I actually saw a little bit less FPS average. And then lastly, with mitigations off, I saw a 4 FPS 1% minimum and a 1 FPS average increase. So, not really worth it in my opinion. Starpunk, same story, also ran the benchmark three times. I got a FPS minimum of 84 and 132 average and 179 97th percentile. With mitigations on and Z swap on, I saw a little bit less as the same result with Red Dead Redemption. And then with mitigations off, I saw 86, 132, 182, and basically exactly the same as with the mitigations off. So, in my opinion, the performance uplift having mitigations off is not really worth it, at least for a gaming perspective. As I said previously, I discourage people from turning mitigations off. And as you can see from these benchmarks, it's really not worth it, at least from a gaming perspective. So yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great weekend and see you guys next time. Cheers.